Okay, so our lesson for today is uh, about the importance of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, still under the Human Rights Education subject. So remember, this is a, uh, a lecture uh, series, and our approach for now is uh, we discuss the subject matter uh, together with the uh, multiple choice question so that uh, the listeners would be able to understand and uh, if you are not my student in the classroom you need to uh, watch the earlier videos uh, so that you can connect with the topic that uh, we are dealing with so specifically in this subject we'll be discussing on the universal declaration of human rights so uh, at the end of the lesson it is expected that the viewers would be able to understand the importance of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and to explain the relationship of the UDHR or the Universal Declaration of Human Rights with other international laws. In addition to that, in this lesson, the student must be able to uh, know and explain the different uh, declarations or articles under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So this is the first question. Which of these articulated the rights and freedoms to which every human being is equally and inalienably entitled? So articulated meaning it provided for. It, uh, it uh, basically uh, declared okay, comprehensively and clearly what are the rights and freedoms of every human being okay, uh, who are supposedly uh, equal okay and uh, they should be uh, inalienably entitled to these rights and freedoms okay so uh, it is the universal declaration of human rights okay so by the way uh, there are 10 questions to be discussed uh, for the next uh, three videos and in this video we are going to discuss only one because the uh, universal declaration of human rights somehow it consists of uh, 30 articles okay However, I'm not going to discuss them comprehensively because it will uh, ta take all the time. Okay? Uh, anyway, the uh, provisions of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights are more or less the same with the uh, uh, fundamental rights that we have in our country, in the Philippines. Okay? So let's take a look on what is Article 3 of the Philippine Constitution, the International Human Rights Law, and the United Nations Commission on Human Rights. The Article 3 of the 1907 Philippine Constitution is also known as the Bill of Rights of the Philippines. So, ito yung basis ng lahat ng human rights sa ating bansa. Ito yung basis ng iba't ibang Republic Act and other special laws uh, promoting and enhancing and uh, the implementation of the basic rights of every uh, citizen of this country. It is known as the Bill of Rights. Okay, so... Um, now, what about the international human rights law? The international human rights law, that is now the law that was, uh, we call it, uh, adapted or uh, the law was uh, taken from the, Uni the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The Universal uh, Declaration of Human Rights is only declared. Okay? It's something like the constitution of uh, human rights in the world. The international human rights, on the other hand, it laid down meaning it specifies what are the obligations of the states okay? uh, we, uh, who are bound to respect and to assume obligations and duties under international law so that they would be able to respect and to protect and to fulfill the human rights in the country, particularly the members of the uh, uh, United Nations. So uh, there must be, uh, it, uh, it provided for the... Uh, uh, we call it the obligation to respect, and that is the states or the countries. So we simplify the state as countries uh, must uh, refrain from uh, interfering with or curtailing the enjoyment of human rights. What does it mean by that? So, ang mga bansa na kasapi rito dapat ay uh, uh, hindi nila dapat uh, tawag natin makialam. Okay? Hindi dapat sila makialam or uh, i-restrict yung kanilang mga citizen 
upang ma-enjoy nila ang kanilang human rights. At the same time, it provided for that the states, they should protect their individuals and groups against human rights abuses. Kaya pag may mga abuses sa bang country, dapat yan, tignan yung bansa, mayroon siyang action. Kaya pag yung bansa na yan, hindi, uh, hindi yan kumakilos para iprotectionan yung rights ng kanyang citizen, makikialam ngayon ang United Nations. And uh, to fulfill, that is, uh, all the states must take positive action to facilitate the enjoyment of basic human rights. In other words, kailangan gumawa sila ng mga batas Kumawa sila ng mga programs, mag-implement ng mga policies that more or less uh, enhance the enjoyment of the basic uh, human rights so that the uh, benefits and the gains of human rights law will be, uh, uh, we call it, uh, enjoyed by all the uh, citizens. Uh, what about the United Nations Commission on Human Rights? Well, this is a commission. Okay. So, it was established in 1946 as part of the League of uh, Nations. By the way, the League of Nations was uh, uh, created, organized, that is uh, uh, for the hope of ending World War. Because after World War I and World War II, there were also other uh, wars in between and after that, which resulted to massive destruction of lives and properties and the loss of economic life of many countries affected by the previous world wars and wars uh, between countries. So eventually they came up with the League of Nations and that League of Nations became the United Nations in which our country, the Philippines, is a member of that. So uh, they came up with a commission, a separate commission uh, uh, within the United Nations consisting of 53 state members. And... Uh, so it's brief expanded uh, over time, meaning uh, uh, that uh, commission uh, became, uh, we call it, uh, it grew to numbers, okay? To respond to the whole range of human rights problems and it set standard to govern the conduct of states because uh, ang idea niyan, no? uh, even uh, after the, uh, the establishment of the League of Nations, uh, meron pa rin mga violations within countries. So, naiwasan yung gera between countries, war between countries. But the problem is, within the countries, within the states, ay may mga alleged uh, human rights violations. So, the United Commission on Human Rights is established as part of the United Nations so that it will act as a forum. When you say forum, yan yung uh, venue upang pag-usapan. Okay? Mga countries, whether large and small, non-governmental groups and human rights defenders from around the world uh, in which they could voice out their concerns on uh, any uh, alleged human rights violations in their country or in any uh, country for that matter. Okay? So that is the United Commission on Human Rights. And uh, with the alleged violations of human rights in the country, uh, the United Nations uh, or the United Nations is... Uh, uh, sending their uh, envoys to the country to uh, conduct investigation whether the uh, alleged or the reported uh, human rights violations are, uh, we call it, uh, done by the government uh, personnel or whether the government is not doing anything about human rights. So what about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? So after 1946 uh, and after the United uh, uh, the UN Commission on Human Rights, they uh, came up with the Man Manya Carta or the Magna Carta. Of course, the pronunciation is Manya Carta. But we Filipinos, we pronounce that as Magna Carta. It's uh, a declaration, okay, of, uh, we call it the uh, fundamental human rights to be enjoyed or to be observed in every country of the world, particularly members of the United Nations. And, uh, it was very relevant during that time and until today it is very relevant because if you are going to read the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it is parallel to the human rights uh, laws that we have in the country. Okay, that's why I'm not going to discuss here comprehensively the uh, articles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights because I might be 
encroaching on our future discussions on those specific uh, uh, human rights uh, declarations. So at least in this uh, lecture, uh, you uh, would be able to know that uh, there are or what are these specific uh, declared human rights. So the extraordinary vision and resolve of the drafters, meaning uh, the drafters of the declaration, somehow they envision okay, that uh, more or less it will uh, enhance uh, peace within countries okay, to reduce greatly the number of human rights violations. So it is considered as the first articulation of the rights and freedoms to which every human being is equally and inalienably entitled. So uh, part of it are promises to all the economic and social, political, cultural, and civic rights that underpin a life free from want and fear. Meaning, uh, uh, mariresolba yung mga economic, political, and civil lackings of every country by observing the uh, basic rights of the people and the basic freedom of the people. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is uh, not uh, a country specific it's a generic meaning it is for all the countries so it's up to the to a certain country to uh, uh, draft their own uh, human rights law provided it will not be contrary to the universal declaration of human rights so it's not a country specific okay or particular to a certain era or social group so uh, it is not only for the 1940s, 1950s, but even for the future, the declaration is gene a generic declaration of what should be accorded to the people as their basic human rights in manners or in matters of uh, tradition, religion, okay, uh, civic, political, and uh, other aspects of our society. So, uh, it also includes inalienable entitlements of all people, meaning you cannot, uh, as we have mentioned uh, earlier, that it should not be uh, separated from the people. So long as you are alive, you are clothed with those uh, human rights, okay? the basic human rights, applicable at all times and in all places. So people of every color, from every race and ethnic group, whether or not they are disabled citizens or migrants, no matter their sex, their class, their case, their creed, their age, or sexual orientation. So you might be wondering, sir, ano ba yung case? Pag sinabi mong case yan, yan yung mga social class na tinatawag natin. Na? May mga social classes, mga poor, mga middle classes, at mga wealthy people. Okay? In the country, we have that uh, the the uh, poverty line, the poor, we have the middle class, the lower middle class, the uh, middle class, the upper middle class, and the uh, high class uh, members of society. However, uh, in other countries, when they speak of case, talagang may limit. Uh, may limit ang freedom ng mga uh, kasapi sa lower case, sa mga may hirap. Unlike in our country, that somehow, although uh, there's a distinction between the income level of the people, at least in our country, uh, people here are uh, uh, luckier than people in other countries like India because uh, uh, there is no distinction between the poor and the rich in the country insofar as the exercise of human rights is uh, concerned. Okay. So uh, again, the UDHR. It serves as common standard. So that's uh, what I mentioned a while back. Common standard meaning okay, it should be our basis. The laws, the constitution that we have and other laws that we have, it should go with uh, uh, the provisions of the uh, UDHR. Okay? It should not go against with that. So it should be our common standard okay, of achievement for all peoples and all nations to the end that every individual and every organ of society keeping this declaration constantly in mind shall strive by teaching and educating so it should be taught to the people and it should be promoted to the people okay to promote respect for these rights and freedoms and by progressive measures uh, creation of uh, programs and policies 
national, international, and to secure their universal and effective recognition and observance. So again, if we go back to the word universal, it is applicable to all. Okay, both among the peoples of the member states themselves and among their peoples. Okay, so as I've said, we are not going to discuss comprehensively the articles of the uh, UDHR in this topic because it will uh, only consume our time and I'll just give you time to uh, read uh, the, uh, the declaration or the articles if I need to discuss a little bit that I'm going to give a little uh, description on uh, the article, uh, the articles 1 to 30 of the UDHR.